Hello, this is Dr. Shapur, and today we're going to go over gene expression. How do we go from a gene to a protein? This is something I alluded to when I introduced uh, uh, organelles in a eukaryotic cell. I explained how uh, a protein is made based on the code that codes for this protein, and the code is in the form of um, uh, uh, it's it's in a, within a gene in a DNA molecule. So uh, at the time I was explaining the big picture and we're going to go into a little bit more detail in this particular presentation. So this is about uh, uh, from gene to protein. How do we get from um, the code that's inside of DNA into an actual molecule of protein that will be used by the cell? So what is gene expression? It's the uh, usage of the information that's in a gene um, that is uh, in the form of a specific sequence of nucleotides. So in a, in a, in a molecule, it looks like just a string of letter, A, C, A, T, T, blah, 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 like this. There's actually only four types of nucleotides. So let's go back to some of the basics here. There are four uh, nucleotides. And I'm just going to um, concentrate on a DNA molecule. I'm not talking about RNA molecules. I'm just going to focus on DNA molecules. Uh, DNA and RNA are nucleic acids. It's one of those four macromolecules, carbohydrates, proteins, lipids, and nucleic acids. And within the nucleic acids, DNA and RNA. I'm just focusing on DNA. How is DNA made? It's those. It's two strands of nucleotides that are intertwined into a helical structure. And these nucleotides, uh, I'm not sure why I wrote four nucleotides, uh, or oh, because we only have four nucleotides, that's why I wrote that. Let's do it in black. Um, there are four nucleotides, A, C, T, and G. And um, this is not really the, the yeah, this is not, uh, the lecture that gets into the details of the composition of DNA and uh, adenine, guanine, cytosine. Uh, we're, we're not getting into the nucleotides and how they are built and their molecular structure. So we're just going to see that there are uh, the letters ACTG and there are only four. And just with these four letters, the code is made. So the code is literally along all the, the whole length of the DNA. It's this string of four nucleotides. So each one of those is one nucleotide. So these nucleotides are strung together like that. Nucleotide, another nucleotide, another nucleotide, another nucleotide. And then just to give you... Uh, and the, and so it's, and you have a helix with another string of nucleotides facing this string of nucleotides, right? So you end up with this double helix. And this is what you see uh, kind of like drawn in, uh, in like a symbol of a DNA molecule, this, this helical structure, because it's two strands. Each strand is, a, is literally strong. It's a, it's a string of nucleotides, and these nucleotides face each other, and they bind to each other with hydrogen bonds. And the way they bind, it creates a twist to the molecule, and you end up with this beautiful helix. So one DNA molecule is two strands of nucleotides that are intertwined into this helical structure. Okay. And these nucleotides, I wrote NT, 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 NT. We actually have four kinds, these four nucleotides. So they're, in a, they're strung together into these long strands. So when you look at one strand, so let's assume either the blue one or the black one, what you're going to see is just this le length of nucleotides that can go on for like, you know, really, really long, like A, C, A, T, T, G, C, T, T, right? You see all of this? This is basically one long strand of nucleotide. And then it's faced with 
the other nucleotide and these two together form the helix. Okay. So the information for a gene is actually in a specific spot in the DNA molecule. Um, so I think this would be a good time to actually add, I'm gonna add a page here because I wanna draw something specific for you. Here, I'm going to draw well, these two strands that I drew in black and blue. So I'm gonna draw the black strand and I'm gonna open it up a little bit here. And then the blue strand and open it up a bit here, okay? And then remember, this is one line, but it's actually a string of nucleotides. And these nucleotides are of four different kinds, A, T, C, G. So let's say this is A, T, another T, a C, you know, whatever it is. So it's a string of nucleotides, and then the nucleotides are facing each other and forming bonds with each other. And it kind of uh, brings the two strands together and they twist and it creates this helix. So I'm just going to draw lines like that so you can see that there is this bonding. Okay. Over here. Okay. So these nucleotides are here. So on the other side, we also have the nucleotides that are over here. So I specifically opened this particular part because that happens to be the location of our gene of interest. So uh, this is the gene of interest happens to be over here, over here, not over here, not you know, downstream or upstream, it just happens to be this particular section. So we actually call this the locus. The locus is the location of the gene. So the entire DNA molecule does not code for a gene. And some parts of the DNA molecule code for nothing. And then other parts code for a specific gene or another or another or another. Okay. So these nucleotides, they're actually paired uh, in a complementary fashion. So all the A's, they're actually pairing with T's and all the G's are pairing with the C's. And I, I'm pretty sure it's double bond A's and T's and triple bonds between G's and C's. And I hope I'm, I hope I'm correct. So every time you see an A on one side, you know that it must have been a T over here because that's the only thing it pairs with. A's pairs with T's and T's pair with A. So if there's a T here, there must be an A on the other side. There's a T here, so there must be an A on this side. There's a C here, so we have to put a G over here, etc. All right? So these two strands are called complementary strands. because that's the complementary uh, way that these nucleotides work with each other. A's pair with T's and G's pair with C's. And that's, that's the way it is. So they, they bind with each other and they create this uh, twist to the molecule, which forms uh, this beautiful helix that we're used to seeing when we talk about DNA. Also, these two strands are complementary to each other, but also one of the strands is called the sense strand because it's the only strand that makes sense it's the only strand that actually codes for the gene of interest the other strand codes for something that's kind of gibberish it doesn't mean anything and i'm going to give you a very very um very great example i'm going to use my name as as an example so my name is Layla.
And let's assume that E's and I's are pairing with each other. So I would put an I over here and an E over here if I was drawing you know, the complementary strand. And L's and A's are uh, complementary with each other. So what, what pairs with L would be an A and what pairs with an A would be an L. And L is over here, so this must be an A. Okay, and here you go. There's one of my strand, and this is the other strand. These are complementary strands. Okay. So when you're looking at these strands and you're reading the recipe to make Layla, you're reading, you can only read one strand and, and to read the correct recipe to make the correct thing. Here, we're trying to make Layla. What, so what makes up Layla? So here, when I'm reading the recipe to, to see what um, what's the code to make Layla, I'm going to read this strand over here. That's the strand that makes sense because I'm reading the code and this is Layla. Okay. If I read the other strand, look at it. it it's it's I-E-L. I mean, it doesn't sound like Layla. So this is not the strand that codes for what I need. So we call this the nonsense strand. So actually the code for the gene is really only in one of the two strands. There's a sense strand and a nonsense strand. And even if you read it the opposite way, um, if you I read it like backwards and maybe Layla is like, coded backwards, then the other strand would still work, but we would have to read it in the other direction. It still doesn't work. Look in the other direction, it's Elaya. <laughs> so it's still not Layla. It's still not Layla. So really it's only one of the two strands that actually contains the correct code to make the protein of interest, the molecule of interest. So using my name is really very helpful to to illustrate that and I hope, I hope it helped you understand why only one of the two strands is the coding strand. Okay. So the information in the genes contained and specific sequences of nucleotides. So I used LEILA, but it's really in reality in the DNA, it's ATCG, AGGG, TTGC, whatever the, the sequence is. Okay. And this DNA is inherited by organisms um, um, this inherited DNA, it, it basically what leads to all our specific traits, uh, because we can have variations of these sequences that will not make such a big uh, deal to the end product, but it will just add a little bit of twist to it. Um, let me let me illustrate how what what that means. For example. Um, this I could be an E instead. Um, so for example, if I didn't have excuse me. So if this I wasn't there and it was an E instead, so then this would not be an E, it would be an I on the other side. Uh, this will still be like Laia, well, it's very far from Layla. However, on the sense strand, instead of Layla, it's Lila, and that can still kind of like code for Layla. It's just kind of maybe pronounced a little bit different. So that's a variation of Layla, and that can still be passable. So our traits are basically like variations of a gene that can just add variety to, to the way the protein is produced without making it something completely, um, uh, completely on on uh, uh, on function non-functional. All right, so that's for the DNA strand. But um, if you remember, um, I had actually I'm going to open it up for you just just so let's see if I can open it up for you here 
I want to open up this, this one here. So in this previous lecture I shared with you about cell organelles, let's go back to the first slide I drew. The first slide I drew this the big picture. And in this big picture slide, I told you about the nucleus and the endoplasmic reticulum, the Golgi, the mitochondria, basically presenting you with all the different organelles. But really I used that opportunity to introduce you to the DNA molecule and how we have a gene in only a specific locus in the DNA and how that gene that needs to be decoded uh, actually needs to be copied first into an RNA molecule because only the RNA is allowed out of the nucleus and the RNA is going to be read by ribosomes to create the protein. So that was the that was the big picture I had presented you in that particular lecture on organelles. So, so that's what we're doing. When we go from DNA to protein, we we need to create an RNA copy and only of that gene of interest. We're not interested in copying the entire length of the chromosome of the DNA molecule. We just want that gene of interest. So here we are in the DNA molecule. We have the string of nucleotides, and let's assume this is the sense strand. So now we really don't talk about sense strand or non-sense strand. We just, this is just, oops, let me stick to the blue here, because that's what I use for the sense strand, right? This is the sense strand right here. So let's just assume this is the sense strand. And we don't really draw the nonsense strand. We don't draw the second one. We just draw the one that we're actually reading the code out of. And um, we're kind of chopping it up into threes, three nucleotides and three nucleotides and three nucleotides, because that's actually how the RNA molecule is going to be read to create the protein. But really, technically speaking, in the DNA molecule, in the RNA molecule, all of these are just strung together into one long line. So CAA, GTA, AAC, blah, 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 all of that, that's in the DNA. Then we need to make this RNA molecule, and that's what happens over here. So this is what I had drawn in this particular picture over here, this RNA molecule over here in green. It's the copy of the gene of interest. So in an RNA molecule, we have the same four nucleotides, and I'm going to draw them in green to show you this is now we're talking about RNA. We have A, uh, C, G, but we don't have Ts. Um, in, in RNA molecules, we have a uracil, so with the letter U instead of a T, uh, because that's the nature of RNA molecules. They don't have uh, uh, thymine. Uh, so we have the all, all we have three nucleotides of, of the original four nucleotides in DNA, and the fourth one is replaced by a uracil in an RNA molecule. Okay, so when we need to copy that DNA of interest, that gene of interest within that DNA molecule, we're going to do the complementary uh, copy of that sense strand. So for every C, I'm going to go find a G because that's what complement is. Oops. Uh, let's go back to, there we go. For every G, we have a C, and for every C, we'll have a G, and A's and T's complement with each other. So here's a C, so we need to bring a G. So we can have uh, that nucleotide that's the complementary nucleotide of the first nucleotide in our coding sequence. So for an A, normally we would have a T, but there's no T in RNA. We bring a U or so. Uh, so the letter U, same here. For A, we bring a U. G, bring in a C. T, bringing in an A. A, normally we would be bringing a T if we were in DNA, but here we're not in a DNA molecule. We're creating an RNA molecule. So I'm drawing these lines, but there's really no binding between the two. So I shouldn't really do that. I was just trying to show you um, 
I should have maybe like do this. So um, when we're assembling the mRNA, because we're creating the copy of the gene of interest, we're bringing the complementary nucleotide. If, if we're reading an A, we need to bring in the complementary nucleotide for A, it's U. The complementary nucleotide for G, it's C. So for every single one, we will bring the complementary nucleotide that's supposed to be there. Okay. And then a protein is going to be made. And I don't know. Oh, yeah. I think the protein was in red. Yeah. So protein is going to be made. And we don't have a ribosome drawn over here, but it's the ribosome that reads every single one of these uh, nucleotides. And actually, it reads them three at a time. Three at a time. G-U-U. -U. And that ribosome knows. That little chef in the kitchen looks at the recipe in the, in the RNA copy and assembles the ingredients to create the final product. So it reads GUU and GUU codes for valine. So it brings in a valine <coughs> and it adds the valine to the growing molecule. So it read CAU, CAU codes for histidine. It reads UUG, UUG codes for, codes for leucine. So it brought all of these amino acids as it was reading the code. That's what the ribosome does. It reads the code in the RNA molecule. And as it reads the code for every three nucleotides, which is actually called a codon. This is a codon. Every three nucleotides codes for something, an amino acid very specifically. And the ribosome assembles these amino acids and you end up with a protein, a string of amino acids. That's it. So proteins link genotype to phenotype. So what does that mean? Um, so when we do a gene expression, what we're doing is we have a code, now we need to show it. So the code is, is, is basically just a recipe on a piece of paper. Uh, so here it's a string of nucleotides in a DNA molecule. Right? Nothing's going to happen if we don't actually, you know, create what it's coding for. So by making the mRNA first, which is just a copy of the code, and assembling the amino acids next, which uh, the amino acids are basically what the code is for, we're creating a final product that we can actually see, touch, you know, uh, uh, it will actually have an activity to it. It will have a function. It will be something. It will be an entity. It won't be just a code in a, a sequence. And that's the beauty of it. You're going to end up with a product. You're creating a product. So the process of copying the DNA into an RNA molecule, that, that process is called transcription. So this transcription process here happened in the nucleus. So at the time, I didn't talk about transcription because I didn't want to add information that wasn't really necessary for that particular lecture at the time, but that's it. This is transcription. Transcription, I'm just going to end the C here. And then the, what the ribosomes do over here, that's called translation. And I'll do it in red. So you see that this is the making of a protein. So this is called translation. When we go from RNA to protein, RNA to protein, it's called translation. So transcription is basically just making a copy of the sense strand into an RNA molecule. Boom, that's it. And then the ribosome has the job of translating that nucleotide sequence because we just went from nucleotide to nucleotide here. So there was no 
no big deal. But now we're going from nucleotide to amino acids. So you need to, to really know the two languages. So reading nucleotide sequences, we have to, to decipher what that means. And we, we have a code. It's called the genetic code. The genetic code is very specific. Um, uh, every three nucleotides mean very specifically one amino acid or another. So what the RNA molecule does is it bridges uh, basically that gap between the genes and the, the proteins. Okay. So in the context of a cell, transcription takes place in the nucleus. These are typical test questions, you know, where does transcription take place? A DNA molecule, no, just the gene of interest, not the entire DNA molecule, just the gene of interest, wherever that is, you know, if it's all of this here, say this, that gene of interest is uh, transcribed into a I just want to do it in green because that's what we've been using for. Uh, gets into an RNA, uh, gets transcribed into an RNA molecule, and then this RNA molecule oh, I shouldn't have done that. I really don't, I like really neat lines and this is not too neat, but that's okay. So what happens actually to RNA molecule, that's something that I've never discussed before, is RNA processing. So RNA, just like proteins when they need to be matured in the Golgi complex, remember that uh, over here. Remember how proteins have to go into the Golgi to get kind of like folded and decorated. So that processing of proteins, there's a similar processing of RNA molecules right before they um, they leave the nucleus and get get caught by the ribosomes to be read. Here we go. There is your RNA molecule over here. The RNA molecule gets caught by the ribosome and the ribosome reads all of these codons. And for every codon, it brings in the amino acid that corresponds to that codon according to the genetic code. So that's called translation. And I'm, you know, the color coding is so different from what I, I used earlier, but that's okay. So transcription and RNA processing takes place in the nucleus. Translation takes place in the cytoplasm and more specifically on the surface of the rough ER because it's done by the ribosomes um, by in the ER. All right, so here it is. Here's the template, uh, DNA template strand. So it happens to be this, the, the top one for that particular example in that particular diagram. ACC, AAA, CC, GAGT, whatever that is, you know. Um, I forgot to talk about the orientation of these strands. Um, you know, yeah, it's not so, it's not so important at this point. So here's the string of nucleotides. Here's the complementary strand because DNA has two strands, remember, and they're intertwined into a helix. Okay, so the DNA has two strands. Only one of them codes for the actual protein of interest. So the DNA template strand happens to be this top one for this particular example. So the RNA molecule is going to be the complementary of this top strand. So the complementary of A is going to be U. The complementary of C is going to be G. Complementary of C is going to be G. Okay? Complementary of A is going to be U because we're making a RNA molecule. We can't add thymines, we have to have uracil. And then during the translation process in the making of proteins, um, here's a protein. Uh, every three nucleotides, which is called a codon, codes for specific amino acid. These next three nucleotides over here, 
code for the next nucleic acid, nu uh, for the ne next amino acid. And these amino acids are strung together into one long chain, and that's it. That's your protein. So here's the genetic code. Of course, you would never have to like memorize this. Um, if you ended up with an exercise of transcription translation process, for the translation process, you would be given the genetic code. So what the ribosome does, it, it has that in its mind. Um, it reads, this is how you use this table. This is um, in this column here is the first nucleotide, what we also call them bases. So is it a G, is it an A, is it a C, is it a U? I don't know. Uh, let's say, okay, U, G, G. So the first letter is U, so I would go here. The second letter is a G. So there it is, U, G, U, G, U, G, U, G. And the third letter is, and I already forgot, U, G, G, another G. So let's look here. UGU, UGC, UGG. UGG goes for uh, tryptophan. Tryptophan, perfect. So the ribosome has this code. Um, that's it, it follows this code. I want to say it has this code in its mind, but you know it's not. It's not a like living thing. It's a structure that reads the RNA molecule and knows that for a U followed by G followed by G, I need to go bring a tryptophan amino acid. And then I, if I read a U followed by U followed by U, this will mean a phenylalanine. I need to go bring a phenylalanine and attach it to my tryptophan, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. The ribosomes, they're following a code, they read the codons and they bring in the corresponding amino acids. And that's it. This is like a very kind of like simple uh, introduction to how we go from a gene to a protein um, by passing via an RNA molecule. You need to know the names of these two uh, events, transcription and translation, where they take place um, in the different areas of the cell. All right, that's it for, for this particular uh, presentation. I appreciate uh, you're uh, paying attention as usual. Bye.